It took the Aztecs over 200 years to find their new home once they set out to find it. The question is, why? Even more importantly, can you trust anything I'm about to say? This is the story of how the Aztecs upped and left their traditional home of Aztlan and spent the next 200 years struggling to find a place that was just right. Something interesting must have happened along the way, right? You bet. Picture this. The Aztecs have been where they were for who knows how long. It's near a lake, but overall it's trash. This area, probably in what is now northern Mexico, is dry and so life is hard. One day, they leave everything they know to find a better life. See this? It's Cuatapes or Serpent Mountain. After traveling for a while, the early Aztecs think, hmm, maybe this could be our forever home. They love serpents, so why not? This is a nice point to introduce this guy, Huitzilopochtli. He's the reason they left their homeland to find something better. He's their main god. Bossy old Huitzilopochtli tells them that Serpent Mountain wasn't the vibe he wanted them to go for when he told them to leave Aztlan. You may be wondering if the reason you can't trust Aztec history is because the presence of a god in the story. I don't believe in Huitzilopochtli, but I don't think it affects our story much. You do you. Either way, they reluctantly start to leave their beloved Serpent Mountain. But there's a hitch. A female warrior called Coyol Chalki says, no, why follow this guy when we're already chilling here? The group is divided and they go to sleep. That night, Huitzilopochtli's followers attack and murder Coyol Chalki and her followers. So Huitzilopochtli gets his way. They leave. Next, they move on to Teneyuga, but it's not right, nor Huexotla or Tezcoco. Why? Because Huitzilopochtli. At this stage, need I say more? This is the Mexico Basin. It's lush and green filled with food and has a lake for fresh water, the opposite of where the Aztecs started. Over a hundred years later, they stumble into it. It's not exactly untouched land. There are some very powerful people around here, along with places like this. It was the Toltec Empire, a much older civilization, now gone. They settle over here, Chapultepec. It seems ideal, yet again. Why would the Aztecs ever leave it? We'll get to that. It's technically Huitzilopochtli's fault. What a shot. But it's not for the reasons we've seen before. First, a distant cousin of Huitzilopochtli called Copil decides he doesn't like where things are going. He breaks away and attacks the rest. The remaining Aztecs fight back. They win, kill Copil, and throw his heart into the lake. Stick a pin in that. Over here are the Chapultepecs. They are one of the powerful groups around the lake. The now reduced Aztecs decide it's time to secure their position. They ask for the hand in marriage of one of the Chipotepec Lord's daughters. They agree she will marry Huitzilopochtli, or just a high-status Aztec who dresses up like him. One night, that Chipotepec Lord is walking around and sees an Aztec dancing around a fire. He gets closer. Something is not right. He gets even closer. Is the Aztec wearing something over them? They are. It's his daughter's skin. He storms off to find some soldiers. The Aztecs don't have a clue what is about to hit. The Lord and his men attack. The Aztecs are on the defensive. They try to defend themselves, but they are being pushed further and further back. Now all that's behind them is the lake. We know this wasn't the end for them, but what did they do? They go into the lake. Will they drown? No. They find an island in the middle of it. They look around the island and see an eagle on a cactus. Allegedly, the cactus is exactly where they threw Coppel's heart earlier. Either way, the eagle and the cactus are exactly the sign Huitzilopochtli said he would send to say that this would be their home. Most importantly, they are safer now. Despite how small it is, they go on to found Tenochtitlan here, turn it into one of the largest cities in the world. But before they do that, they go back to the Chapultepecs and ask them for a king, which they give them. So most of what I've just told you probably has some basis in truth. But the reason a true story can't be told here is that A, this new king had all previous history is destroyed once he came to power, and B, when the Spanish conquered, they destroyed a text this king authorized, and C, later, the guilt-ridden Spaniards decided to ask the surviving Aztecs about their history. So what we have is the original history warped by a king to suit him, destroyed by the Spanish, and then put back together by the Spanish many years later, with the help of a few people left to tell it. So there's no way of verifying any of that, but it's the best history we have. Either way, they came from the north, took a long time to find a home, pissed off the locals, and stumbled their way into a place that shouldn't have been a good home, but it became a one of the largest and most powerful cities in the world. And after a while, the Spanish arrive at their very impressive door. Watch this to see how exactly that went down.